Right. Cool. Hey, welcome everyone to uh, our Team USA training and tactics session with the Paralympian Caitlin Verfer. Um, yeah, it's part of our uh, 2021 Angel City Games Summer Series presented by the Hartford. Yeah, I just, um, it's an honor to have uh, Caitlin here with us right before she leaves for Tokyo. So it's, you know, really, really exciting. Uh, for those of you that weren't in the last session that are jumping in for this session, uh, just make sure on the top right, uh, it's on speak, uh, active speaker view so that you can uh, see Caitlin uh, when she's talking. Um, and then that uh, you kind of leave yourself on mute the entire time. Uh, that way, you know, we're not interrupting each other and, you know, causing distractions. Um, yeah, uh, additionally, like always, we have our medical volunteers here. So if, uh, you know, you're sore or sick or something and you need, need something, just, you know, put a shout out in the chat and they'll reach out to you. Um, yeah. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> uh, well, tough luck, Caitlin. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, finally, I'd like to take a moment to, um, thank all of our sponsors. Um, first, uh, you know, a huge thank you to the Hartford. They're our uh, presenting sponsor for the 2021 uh, Angel City Summer Series, um, as well as uh, making the world a softer place, along with our um, other uh, sport sponsors, the Hangar Clinic, Fox Sports, and Gold Meets Golden. Um, yeah, uh, and again, like, thanks to all of you for being here. Um, yeah, so just to, you know, give a little bit of background on Caitlin. Uh, she will be heading to Tokyo for her fourth Paralympic Games. Um, she's represented Team USA in wheelchair tennis for the first three games. And now she's getting in in another new sport, which is paracanoe. Um, yeah, she's, uh, she currently teaches wheelchair tennis and other adaptive sports over at Ability360 in uh, Phoenix. It's a really, really cool gym if some of you guys haven't made it out there. Um, and she's, she's been our uh, tennis coach at the Angel City Games for a long time. Um, yeah, um, so Kaylin, you're awesome. Thanks for uh, showing up and doing this. And yeah, Caitlin wanted to show a quick introductory video real quick about the, uh, about Paracanoe. So let me just share my screen. Um, alrighty. Cool. Uh, boop, boop. All right. Uh oh. Wait, is it going? Oh, I just can't.
This looks super intense, Caitlin. This is way more <laughs> than I had even thought. <laughs> Wait, can, is there words or no? No sound right now. We're just enjoying. We're just watching. Okay, okay, okay. I wasn't sure if the words went through or not, but that's okay. So everybody kind of saw the video then, right? I'm sorry, I can't see. No, it's okay. Okay, cool. All righty. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Caitlin and let her take it from here and tell you a little bit more about Paracanoe. All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you and welcome uh, to this Paracanoe segment for the Angel City Games. Um, I'm really excited to be able to talk about Paracanoe and introduce it to you guys. Um, I, I thought paracanoe or canoe in general or just anything in water sports and involving a boat meant that you were rowing and um, it's the complete opposite of rowing. So in rowing, you're, you're actually facing away and you're paddling backwards in the water. But when you're in paracanoe, we have, um, you're always going forward. And there's actually two disciplines to paracanoe. Um, there's a kayak and it's uh, about a I'd say a 17 foot long boat and it's really narrow, um, maybe about 50, 55 centimeters wide. Um, it's on the roof of my car right now. So I, I might show it to you really quickly up there if you can kind of see it. It has a cover on it, so you can't really tell. But um, if you lean over a little bit too much, you're gonna tip the boat. It's super tippy and these boats are meant to go fast. So um, what we do at the Paralympic level is we race 200 meters and at like national and international events, we race uh, 200 meters, 500 meters, and sometimes a thousand. Um, they're working on getting more distances in the pair in the Paralympics, but Paracanoe was first introduced uh, and Rio in 2016 Olympics. So it's a, it's a pretty new sport. Um, what I also wanted to say is, uh, I'm sorry that I'm coming to you from a, a parking lot. Um, I'm actually on my way to go work with my coach um, in San Diego. So if there's any wind noise or anything like that, I apologize if you can't hear me. Um, but I just want to show you really quickly before we get into the workout. Um, this is my paddle. So this is just like you kind of saw in the video. This is my kayak paddle. It's made out of carbon fiber and it's really lightweight. So you're able to, um, get the blades going pretty fast, uh, in the water. So that's, that's my kayak paddle. And this one is my, um, the new paddle it's just a single blade the kayak paddle is a double blade and this one is uh is for the outrigger like you kind of saw in the video so um we're gonna do two kind of workouts with the paddles you don't need a paddle for the workout all that i ask is if you have um you don't actually if you don't have anything that's okay but if you do have like a stick um or a broomstick or anything like that at home or even a piece of string um as i was driving here i'm in Yuma. i was thinking like you could even use a piece of floss. I know that sounds disgusting, but just to kind of give you an idea, or we can just use our hands. So I'll, I'll do a couple of different ways. Um, I also wanted to show you to one other thing that I had to get made custom for me is um, I have my own seat belt for me. And this is also made out of carbon fiber. We want everything like as, as light as possible in the boat so that we can go as fast as we can. And um, this is pretty much just molded to my butt. And then I have some a strap here to help me keep my legs straight in, um, in the boat. I have like, uh, it, it's called a cockpit. So in my cockpit, I have, uh, where my feet go, I have like molded, uh, straps and I got a molded platform where my feet sit so that my feet don't move. And, um, I also have like a strap that kind of looks like, um, shin guards. So I kind of just place that on over my legs so that my legs, don't really move. If you guys are familiar with any other wheelchair sport or anything like that, um, you know, like you want to be as, as one with possible with your chair. It's the same thing with the boat. You don't really want your body to be able to move. So, um, all right. Are you guys ready to get started and, uh, maybe try a little pair of canoe out? If you, I don't know, let me see. I'm just looking through. Does everybody have? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, I see some broomsticks. Okay, so we're ready. So what we're gonna do just to get started is we're just gonna warm up. I don't know if you guys had done any workouts yet today. So um, I actually went to the Hungarians are the best, are some of the best in the sport. In fact, um, they're they're so fast. Like they go as fast as a speedboat. Um, they're the non-para uh, athletes, but 
Um, so I learned some of their warmups and I wanted to, to use, show them to you guys a little bit. So the first one that we're going to do is just um, kind of like arm circles. So you're kind of just going to touch your, your hands to your shoulders and you're just going to kind of roll your shoulders back just like this. Yep, just kind of roll them back. Kind of like you're doing like a big arm circle, but you're only using your elbows. So then this also stretches like this side uh, of your arm. And so what this does is it just kind of really opens up your chest, opens up all the stuff, all the muscles that we're gonna use to paddle. So we're kind of going backwards. Now we're gonna go forwards a little bit. There you go. I feel like a chicken. I know, it's a little bizarre. But the Hungarians, man, they know what they're doing, huh? <laughs> All right. Looking good. Looking good. Just a couple more. Two, three. All right, let me kind of shake it out a little bit. All right, the next one that we're going to do is we're just going to do some uh, side leans. So you're just going to kind of do some of these really quick just to kind of warm up your core a little bit. Because in pair canoe, we use our arms, our shoulders, and a lot of our core. There's a lot of twisting involved. Kind of move to the side. Good. There you go. Awesome, awesome. All right. So we kind of get that moving. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our arms like this. So you're gonna have one opposite of the other like this. And when you go like this, you're gonna go, hold on, I'll turn so you can see a little bit better. When you're gonna go like this, you're gonna kind of break it back like that a couple of times and you're gonna switch it like that. It's kind of a good stretch. Just kind of wake up our arms. I do two. Right, do a couple more, two more, last one. All right, so our shoulders are kind of awake now. We're feeling pretty good. All right, so now if you have your, um, your broomstick, I'm gonna grab my kayak paddle since I actually have it here. But when I first learned how to paddle, I used the broomstick. So um, you wanna hold it so you have, when you hold the paddle, you wanna hold it so that you're pretty much at a 90 degree angle. So that way, um, I hope you can kind of see. So your, your arms are right in the middle. Oh, they're blowing away, it's a little windy out here. All right, so you have a 90 degree, you all look pretty set, that looks good. All right, so then when you, um, a lot of people think when you kayak, you kind of move your arms like this, but really that doesn't really allow you to get a lot of power. So what you do is you're gonna, to back up a second so I don't hit my clock. So you're gonna, what you're really gonna do is you're gonna hold it out in front and you wanna think like you're gonna kind of keep your arms straight. There's a slight bend in your elbow, just a slight bend. And when you're moving, you're also twisting your hips. So you're kind of turning. And when you're, when you like uh, put it into the water, you push down. So you push down into the water like this. So, and then your, your hands are always gonna be right in front of your eyes. So the back of my hand is always right in front of my eyes. I'll turn to the side so you guys can kind of see what looks from the side. So I'm out here kind of uh, elbows sort of bent, like here. Just like that. You really, ah, whoa. If you really, uh, you really feel the twist as you turn, you use the whole body's rotation. So as I turn through, just like that. There you go. All right, so it looks pretty good. It looks like we got it. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little uh, little exercise. We're gonna do a little interval trainings because with pair canoe, we're really only going 200 meters and our fastest times, we wanna try to get it under a minute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go a minute on and then we'll take a 30 second break and then we'll go one more minute on and you're going to try to paddle as fast as you can and try to keep the form it's going to be challenging because for me um it's challenging it's still challenging i'm not uh a lot of the competition that i'm up against they've been doing this for eight ten years and i've really only been paddling for two years so um i'm pretty new to the sport as well but i'm learning and it's and i'm learning the faster you want to go the sooner your technique is going to break down so um are you guys ready? We're gonna try this. Are we all ready? 
All right, I'm going to put my timer on here. We'll go for one minute, start training. And I'll go from the side. You guys ready, set? All right, go. Paddle just as fast as you can for one minute. You got it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Oops. Keep those arms out in front. Back of the hands by your eyes. Twist those. Twist as much as you can with your torso. Good. Far forward if you can. Keep going, keep going. Got about uh, 25 seconds. 25 seconds. Go, 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 go. Hard, hard, hard. Fast as you can. It's not as fun in the air as when you're on the water. It's a blast. But this is just to get you guys the idea. Four. I like to count in fours. Four. One, two, three. Kind of start going like a windmill. All right. And time. That was good. All right. So now we got a 30 second break. We'll do that one more time. You guys did great. See, Some people still hanging out. I hope so. <laughs> right on. How are we doing? Everybody's good. All right. We'll do that uh, one more time. We'll see. We got. About eight more seconds, and we're gonna try it again. I'm gonna go sideways again just so I don't hit my car. And ready, set, go. Those arms are straight, the slight bend. Whoops, I'm gonna wreck my paddle. Twist, twist, twist. Back of the hands in front of your eyes. Oh, and you probably want to have your brakes on if you're using a chair. If I didn't tell you that, I apologize. If you're moving everywhere, you probably did put your brakes on. Keep going, keep going. 20 more seconds. And this time. Right on. All right. That's the kayak. Um, that's how you paddle a kayak. So if you, even when you go out like paddling around, if you guys have any kayaks at home or just like just those regular recreational kayaks, um, I taught my my husband Greg how to paddle like the first time I went to a training camp and uh, <laughs> we started paddling like that. And everybody on the lake was like, holy cow, you guys are fast. Why do you guys paddle so fast? And we were just, I was like, well, we know how to paddle. Oh. So it makes a difference. So yeah, next time you get on your kayak, try, try, try it. Okay, so we're gonna do one more. Um, we're gonna try the, the canoe discipline, so the other one that I do. Um, this, is, this is my main focus. The kayak is kind of like secondary right now. And um, I'm really got the quota for Japan in my canoe. So with the canoe, you're gonna kind of do the same thing. If you have a, uh, a broomstick or a stick, or even a string, you can kind of hold the string up like this and then hold it down here like this. But when you hold the canoe paddle, um, you're right here. Put my brake on. You're gonna hold it here. So, and you always want your top hand, this is called your top hand, to be uh, below your bottom hand. And you always want it to be right on top of each other. So if you're like this, the boat's gonna go that way. And if you got it too much under the boat, the boat's gonna go that way. So if you wanna go straight, you want it to be right on top. And then, what you do is you push down like with this hand, almost as if you're like painting a wall. So like, I wanna keep my arms straight. My paddle's a little too long. I don't wanna hit the ground here. So I'm kind of just pushing down with this, my top hand and trying to keep it straight. And then I also use um, these muscles, my lats on the back to, as I, as I come down, I engage my lats. So it's kind of like this, all right? kind of how you paddle the canoe. So trying to keep that arm straight, right? And then on the exit, we call it the exit when you come out of the water, uh, you're gonna kind of bend it, your elbow and you're gonna lead with your elbow out. So it kind of looks like this, so you paddle, paddle. Caitlin, quick question. Yeah. Which hand, if, which should, should be your dominant hand, oh. where would you put? So if you, if you're right-handed, your right hand is going to be on the bottom. If you're left-handed, 
your left hand's going to be on the bottom and you're going to push down with your left. Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. It also too, like getting in the canoe, it depends. Um, like for me, I'm an incomplete, uh, injury. So like my right side was way stronger than my left side. And a lot of more people paddle on the left for some reason. Cause well, cause most people are right-handed, but for me, because my right side's stronger, um, we decided that I was going to be a, a right, right side of paddler. And so we really in the canoe, we really don't switch. Like we only, like I said, it's a short distance. And anytime you have to make a switch, that's time that you're taking away from having that blade in the water. So, um, we want to, all of my steering moves are done with my, are done with the paddle. So like, if I want to go to the right, I'm going to do a more of like a J stroke, or if I need to go left, I'm going to do a C stroke, what we call, but we don't need to worry about that right now. Just... All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, um, we're going to do the same exercise that we kind of just did with the kayak. We're going to do that twice. We're going to do one minute on 30 seconds off one minute on, and you're going to try to paddle your canoe, uh, stroke as fast as you can. All right. And go. Today was my off day. I get some training in. Try to push down with that top hand. I'm just, I don't want to hit it concrete here. So I'm just being careful. But yeah, I try to push down with that top hand. Push, 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 push. Pull back with that lat. Pull back with that lat. 20 more seconds. You guys got it. You're doing great. Keep it going. Keep it going. Awesome. We're getting the heart rate up. Keep going. Keep going. And five more seconds. And stop. Right on. Awesome. All right. 30 second rest. We'll do it one more time. You guys feeling warm? I am. It's like a hundred. It's like a hundred and eight out here in the desert, but it's great. I can't wait to be in San Diego because it's gonna be so cool. I know it. It'll feel good. All right. So we'll do that one more time. And a lot of people, it's a lot harder than it looks. The technique is huge. I mean, I thought you just get in the boat, go. But I learned a lot in the last couple of years. All right, ready, set, we'll go. Here we go, paddle. Push down with that top hand. Doing good, doing good, doing good. Oh, Eric's got it going. He's flying. One thing I forgot to mention is that there are three different classifications in each boat. So in the kayak, if you're a KL1, that means you have a higher level of disability. So like somebody that might be up here, um, I'm a KL2, so I'm right in the middle. And a KL3 is somebody that would be maybe an amputee, or we got 10 more seconds, amputee or somebody that has a lower level of spinal cord injury. And the same goes for, uh, keep going two more seconds and time. And the same goes for, um the Baja if, if you're in the in the canoe um the higher up uh level of injury you have could be a VL they call it a VL1 I'm a VL2 I'm in the middle and then there's VL3 someone that's like an amputee or has a lower level or maybe they can walk a little bit so um all right so for the cool down real quick we'll just do um a couple of my favorite stretches that are really important so we'll just do one of these Right here, just kind of stretch it out. I'm sweating right now, it's good. And I need to get out of the car and get a little activity. My heart's beating fast. Um, I also just read that we've been stretching all wrong. We're supposed to hold it for like 30 to 40 seconds. What I remember in school, they'd be like, hold it for 20 seconds, but it's really actually longer, I read. Um, actually, my coworker told me that she's a, a trainer at Ability360. All right, we'll switch sides, go to this other side. Good. It's a lot more fun when you're on the water, I promise. Right now you're kind of like, what the? And when you have something to grab with your paddle. 
All right, good. And we'll do, um, I really like neck stretches. So we'll just kind of do one of these, kind of pull your neck to the side, your head to the side, to your ear to your shoulder. My neck's just really tight. Okay, the other side. Right on. That was awesome. I you guys thought that was cool or uh, or too intense. I don't know. <laughs> wow, that was that was awesome, Caitlin. Like I wish you would have given me a heads up. I was over here, I was dying halfway through that. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. You could be a really good paddler. You got some good skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure, make sure to repeat that to your coach, right? Just, just reiterate that. Um, yeah, no, that was, that was great. I, I turned on exercise mode on my Apple Watch halfway through that. So, thank, thanks for the extra steps. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right, we got some questions that popped up. So, um, like, uh, yeah, we'll we'll just go with. Um, like some like real questions real quick like is paracanoe like always like uh do you always race on like calm water yeah we always race um we all on flat flat water so um yeah that's another misconception i think people have is they think that um we race in like rapids or do like a slalom um it's always flat water the only way that it might not be like calm is if it's super windy there's like there's one race course in the world in, in Poland that's pretty choppy. Um, but other than that, it's always pretty smooth. That's a good question. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it does the choppiness make it like even more difficult or do you find it more fun? Cause you're getting like kind of knocked around a little bit. Um, you get knocked around a little bit. And then what makes me nervous about that is um, if you tip over, you get disqualified. So you're, you're just out of the race. Uh, the other thing is if you, if you are getting bumped around a lot, you could go out of the lane. That also disqualify you from the race. So you got to stay in your lane. You got to stay in your boat. Um, and other than that, I mean, it is more fun. It is a little bit harder to find the catch. So what that means is like, it's a little bit harder to, if the waves are going, it's like a little bit harder to get, put the whole blade into the water sometimes. So you can like, like almost like if you're running, it's like you would like, like stub your toe, like you're kind of miss your foot on the ground. So um, that also makes it kind of interesting, but yeah. All right, awesome. Uh, so yeah, it's speaking of uh, falling out or rolling over, like what what happens? Like you get disqualified, and then you just like float in the water, or you swim to shore. Like what happens after that? So there's always safety boats out there. So if during the race or even during practice, there's um there's these little safety boats that are going out there. They're motor boats, and um. If you flip over, well, here's the number one thing that I learned before I even got in the boat to like learn how to paddle or, I mean, before I started racing, I had to have an exit plan. So like for my exit plan, it's super simple. I just undo my strap. But um, the only nerve wracking thing is, you know, if you flip over, sometimes you have that sense of panic where you're like, oh my gosh, I got to get out of the boat. But I, I, we practice it over and over. Like I practice my safety plan a lot so now if I flip it's just I'm calm I'm cool and collected about it so it's just practicing over and over so it is a lot of fun to you know tip your teammates over and um and help each other practice the safety plan <laughs> <laughs> uh that's awesome um uh, yeah another question does everyone who competes in uh the KL also compete in DL yeah so Everybody, yeah, everybody, not everybody does. Like some people just want to focus on the kayak and that's their thing. Some people just want to focus on the canoe or the VL one or the VL. And that's, that's cool too. Um, I kind of fell in love with kayak. I, I really like kayaking first, but then I was introduced to the canoe later. And just for me and my body type, like the canoe, um, the canoe would just fit me better so it also just depends too on what you like but there's a lot of paddlers that do both and then there's a lot of a lot of people that do one or the other or they'll do both and have a, a more a major focus on one instead okay awesome um and uh, a little bit about like the transition so it was like what was it like 
switching from being like elite in one sport to being elite in the other sport? Like, what was that transition like? Um, it was, it's been humbling. Like learning a whole new sport is, is there's a lot of humility. There's a lot of, um, like it, it was interesting. Like, you know, to be really good at something and to be at the top of the level of something at the top of your game in another sport and then switch over. I felt like I was at the bottom of the totem pole, definitely. And, you know, I, I, I lost kind of like instinct. Like I didn't have an instinct anymore. Whereas tennis, like I, all my, I relied a lot on my instinct. And now, um, even still today, like, even though I train every single day and I'm on the water twice a day, most days, you know, I, the water is, uh, it's a whole nother animal. And like, I flipped the other day. Um, and it, it is a little nerve wracking to be out. Like I flipped and my coach was, was on the other side of the, of the lake and he saw me flip over, but it's like, you know, you're in God's hands. It's like almost like you're surfing or, or any sport where you you rely on your environment and, and those external factors that you don't have control over. So, um, I think that's why I kind of, I kind of fell in love with the sport because you don't know what you're going to get. And every day is different too. Like, and every race is different. Like I could have a really good race one day and then, but, and the conditions are great. And then the next day, the, the conditions could be totally different. There could be a really funky side wind and I can barely get my boat to go straight down the lane. So, um, it's, it's a whole new challenge, which I love challenges. So. Uh, and speaking of challenge now, now you can kind of, kind of brag about yourself a little bit, but what's the, fastest you've gone and like what's kind of like your average speed um the fastest so the cool thing about this guys is that I'm so new to the sport that like this is my first like big training like really big time training in the sport um and there's not a lot of people that compete in the sport so that's why I'm hoping that I can get some more people interested in because I just really want to see the sport grow um and I also learned that since I started kayaking and canoeing that like, I, I, I mean, I don't know some of us are all different of how we ended up in the chair, ended up with a disability, but like, I realized I have muscles that I didn't even know. And I had like, since I, since I've been hurt or since I broke my back and, um, it's just crazy. Like I've gained way more function in my core than I ever knew I had. And even playing wheelchair tennis, like I used to use the strap here so that like when I could hit the ball, I, I would sit up straight and not lose my balance. But now I don't even need the strap anymore because I have these muscles working that I, I didn't even know existed. So um, I also find it really cool. I'm going to, I'm going to be a recreational therapist. I'm taking my exam in December and um, I really want to start using, uh, I really want to start using Parrot Canoe as also like therapeutic recreation because um, just, I was just thinking about this a couple months ago. Like imagine if I would have like been introduced to the sport like a long time ago, how just, just how much more I would have felt maybe even more confident in my tennis chair, like knowing like, Oh, I do have these muscles and I can sit up straight. I just never knew how to train them. And so, um, there's not a lot of research too. And I know that they're working on doing a lot more research in pair canoe, um, just to learn about that. But going back to my fastest times. Um, so I finally broke a minute, which is really exciting. Um, the fastest woman that my biggest competition and, uh, she's from great Britain, the, you know, GB is always the best. Uh, She's does, uh, in the Baja, she does, uh, in the canoe, she does 54 seconds in 200 meters. I'm at 57. So I still have five more weeks of training. Our goal is to hit 50, 54, 55 is really our goal. Um, for somebody that hasn't paddled or had that much experience, uh, that's, that's really well is what my coach says in the kayak. Uh, I'm at 59. So we're under a minute there as well. So um, I'm just stoked to be under a minute. There's a lot of athletes in the sport that still can't break a minute. So I, I'm stoked about that. <laughs> that was my goal. Uh, that, that's awesome. Well, congrats on the PR a little, a little late, but that, that's, pretty, <laughs> that's pretty sweet. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, any, any tip, uh, for anyone that, that wants to like start getting into paracanoe? Yeah, um, get, if you are interested in getting into para canoe, um, number one, please like reach out to me. There's not a lot of people that, that do paddle, but if you're seriously interested, I would love to get you out there, reach out to me, but there are a bunch of different organizations. Like I know in, in the Los Angeles area, there's the 
Newport Beach or Newport Aquatic Center. They have a, a paracanoe program where I'm headed right now, the San Diego Canoe and Kayak Club. They have a, a paracanoe program. Um, there's a couple I know back east, and I'm trying to get something started at Tempe Town Lake in Phoenix. Um, you can also reach out to, I know the ACA, which is the American Canoe uh, Association. They have a Facebook page that you can reach out to. Um, and they can get you connected with somebody in your area. Um, but what you can do or what I did when I first saw the sport and I wanted to get into it is I had a, I just had like my regular recreational kayak, a, like a, a plastic kayak that you buy at like Costco or whatever. And, um, I don't know. I just, I just started paddling around and, um, that's just a good way to find out if you, if you even like being on the water, if you, if you even like paddling and, um, that's a great start. All right. Awesome. Um, well, uh, I don't see any more questions. So Caitlin, any like closing remarks, anything you want to say before we let you get back on the road? <laughs> uh, I just want to say thanks to the Angel City Games for um, giving uh, athletes like us this platform to share sports with, with the, our next generation and with our youth. And um, this was really important to me and I didn't want to miss it because like, I just want to see my sport grow and, uh, I only want to help other people get involved in doing activities that they want to do. So, um, just thank you. Big thank you to angel city games and, um, yeah. And to all the other athletes that are going to be competing in Tokyo, good luck. And we'll see you there. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much, Caitlin. That, that was super fun. Um, cool. yeah, that definitely got all of our heart rates, like jumping through the roof. Um, <laughs> you guys got a good workout yeah uh yeah so yeah thanks again to you know everyone that showed up uh for for this workout thanks for to our medical staff um a big thank you to uh of course the hartford um uh, making the world a softer place uh fox sports the hangar clinic, gold meets golden. Um, like we are truly appreciative. Um, yeah, uh, and of course, Caitlin. I can't say it. I can say it a thousand more times. Like, thank you, Caitlin. You're the best. Um, make sure make sure to follow Caitlin on Instagram. Uh, I'm gonna pop her Instagram handle into chat right now, along with uh, USA uh, Canoe and Kayak and Paracanoe. So if like Caitlin said before, if you wanna if you wanna reach out and try to get in, make sure to follow them on Instagram or Caitlin on Instagram and reach out. Um, but yeah, uh, next week we'll be having our final Paralympian panel and Team USA uh, training and tactics session. It'll feature powerlifting, judo, seated throws. So yeah, definitely be sure to show up to those and uh, please join us. Uh, stay updated with everything going on with uh, check your email, check the social media. Um, yeah. Just appreciate all of you. Double appreciate you, Caitlin. Thanks for showing up. I look forward to seeing everyone next week. Right on. Thank you guys. We'll see you guys. Have a good one. Bye. Safe travels. Thanks.